The kingdom is bigger in the inside than it is on the outside. On the outside, the kingdom is a narrow gate, a narrow door. Jesus Christ, you have to go through that door, except Christ is Lord and Savior of your life. You walk through that door, and then the kingdom then becomes massive. Before you were outside as a non-believer, when you walk through the door, the kingdom of God is massive. Does that make sense to you? Can you see the picture? It is in the inside where we find the Lord saying to us that we're no longer servants, but his friend. Can you see the picture? Outside the narrow gate, the, the narrow door, I don't know that God is my friend. Right? Yeah? So I'm oblivious to the kingdom of God and what he wants for me. Yeah? I ask Jesus to be Lord and, say, and Saviour of, 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 of my life. I open that narrow door, I step inside, I'm in his kingdom, and all, all of a sudden I am a friend of God now. The one who created me, he not only, he not only created me, but he calls me a friend. And that opens a brand new avenue to your life. Does that make sense? It's incredible, isn't it? We are supposed to be kingdom people. We are here to make a difference in our world around us. Okay? So what happens? When we become friends of God, we then have an influence on our, on our world around us. Does that make sense? Because we're in a massive big room now called the Kingdom of God. Solomon gave an amazing statement in Proverbs 13 verse 12. <coughs> Desire fulfilled is a tree of life. In 2 Chronicles 7 verse 11 we read that Solomon successfully accomplished all that came to his heart regarding the temple of the Lord. In John 16 verse 24 it says, God wants to answer our desires, our prayers, so that our joy may be complete. When we go through that narrow door, our joy then becomes complete. Does that make sense? That's why church should be a place full of joy. And yet, church in this nation struggles with people laughing in church. I'm not being, being offensive. But the joy of the Lord is our strength. The happiest people on, 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 on this earth should be the born again believer. Church then, if church is you and I, we should be full of joy. There is a time to mourn, there is a time to be sad. We lose loved ones, don't we? And that is right. But for the majority of the time, church should be a place of joy. We should be the happiest people on earth. They wrote a book on that many years ago. In fact, it was the first book I ever wrote when I got saved. Ever read, ever wrote. <laughs> <laughs> ever read when I got saved. Right? Incredible. We are the happiest people on earth. We should, we should be. Have a look at the person next to you and are they happy? <laughs> That's why church should be full of joy. Joy is the result of our redeemed heart revealing in its participation in God's unfolding plan for the earth through prayer. I'll read that again. Joy is the result of our redeemed heart <coughs> revealing in its participation in God's unfolding plan for the earth through prayer. In other words, joy comes through having our prayers answered. Yeah? yeah? yeah. Is this just me or what happened to you as well? I don't know, but answered prayer, especially those that require supernatural intervention, make me happy. Or yeah. well, is that just me? Does it make you happy as well? Yeah, yeah. It's the best, isn't it? When you see God answer a supernatural prayer, I don't know about you, but you want to jump and leap and walk all over the place, don't you? Or is that just me? It's fantastic. It's the best, isn't it? Isn't it the best? Yeah. It's just the best. When God answers a supernatural, incredible prayer, it's in, impossible in the natural, and God answers it, wow, it is the best. And you know something? I found out in my life, that happy people are fun to be with. Yeah? I 
tribe, and if somebody's unhappy or miserable, I'd say as few words with him as possible. And that's not being a, offensive, but it's, it's sad, isn't it? But fun people are happy people, and they're fun to be with. I don't know about you, but is that why Jesus was called the friend of sinners? Was it? I don't know. But it's called, isn't it, in the Bible, the friend of sinners? Do you know, do you know what my thoughts he was called that for? I'm not saying I'm right here, it's just my thoughts, okay? His joy exceeded all, all those around him. His joy exceeded all those around him. So I don't know about you, you like to have friends who are happy, have fun with them. Yeah. So if that's a fact, and Jesus was probably had more fun or things around him than anyone else, because he's God, sinners are going to be attracted to him, aren't they? Because they want to be around him. And that's why he believed he was called the friends of sinners. That's, that's, that's only my in, in, inter, interpretation. Anybody who's watching that live, it's not wrong theology, it's Steve Yates' interpretation. <laughs> his joy exceeded all those around him. Day after day, Jesus saw his prayers answered by his Heavenly Father. Day after day, he seen his prayers answered by his Heavenly Father. Oh, what joy that fills my heart. Oh, what joy must have filled his heart. I don't know about you, but Jesus' joy is contagious. Even before he was physically born, his joy was contagious. Because John the Baptist leapt for joy in his mother's womb because Mary, who was pregnant with Jesus, walked into the room. Isn't that incredible? So the joy of Jesus is, is, is contagious even before he was born in the physical. Church, joy must become the mark of true believers. It will attract people to you. I'm not clever here, but if you're miserable, you have very few friends. In fact, you'd be lucky to have one. <laughs> <laughs> and, if, and if you know it's Billy, it's Billy No, mate. <laughs> It is true. It is true. 